Very good. You know? Think about the fact that, subhanAllah, yakhi, that is something you have to understand that your wife has needs as well. Your wife might have ambitions as well. Like it's, it's subhanAllah, that's one thing that I think a lot of brothers, what they have is like they bring their wives and they just expect that everything will go. La, akhi, make a financial plan. Prepare yourself. Uh, akhi, yakhi, you're taking the daughter of someone else. She's the daughter of someone. How would you like someone to treat your daughter? You understand? St like, like, keep these kind of matters in your in your mind because it's not easy, Akhi. Life. It's not just. It's not all like uh, sunshine or whatsoever. I don't know. You know what's yeah, the yeah. right what the right words for it, but it is hard. And you have to understand. Yeah. You go. You are busy. You go study. You have your friends. You already made. Uh, you go to the majest. But the wife, you can't keep at home the whole day. You understand what I'm saying with the kids. Like, yeah, that, 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 is, that is very hard. You have to uh, try to make a plan. Like, try to make a financial plan. Try to uh, 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 be, have some sort of stability. That is very, very important when you bring your wife and your kids. And try to give them a day as well. Uh, don't, like, try to give them time as well. They have hak on you as well. They have hak on you as well. So try to give them time. Try to give them as well enjoyable time. Look, when, yeah, they say, they have a statement, happy wife, happy life. <laughs> what is, what is, but it's important. <laughs> no, but that is very important. If she is, if she is good, if she is comfortable, Akhi, wallahi, you you form a very good team in Medina, and she will actually support you in doing what you're doing. You understand what I'm saying? But when we are young, we don't think about these matters very well. You understand? حركاتهم وهمومهم وعزومهم لله لا للخلق والشيطان نعم الرفيق لطالب السبل التي تفضي إلى الخيرات والإحسان تفضي إلى الخيرات والإحسان. Let me eat something, أخي. <laughs> get the energy, get all the energy, يا حبيبي. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the next question, Akhi, it's a deep one, but it's one I think that's important. And obviously, you know, we've been there, we've done it. So, Akhi, you know, at the time when we were studying that, there was a certain period of time when trials and tribulations started, you know, erupting yeah. in Medina, and it spread it all over. So my question to you is, for the students that are going to come, generally speaking, Akhi, when you were there, how did you manage to deal with all the fittings, all the qila waqals, you know, he said, she said, Well, no doubt, no doubt, no doubt, I got affected by these matters as well, but I try to stay out of it as much as I could because you know how I am. I'm very social, I'm you understand what I'm saying. So, alhamdulillah, yeah. yani, one thing is, akhi, that's what I'm saying. You need to set goals, what you want to reach, and don't be the first one to talk. Wait, go back because the Prophet said as well in the times of fitan, stay in your houses. In times of fitan, what means like stay away from it, go out of it. Don't be the one that talks. I know that the talking about these matters is easy, but akhi, make sure that when you talk, that you are certain about what you're saying, not just because Fulan or Allah says it. Yeah. Akhi, this is Deen, this is Yom Al Qiyamah, this is Arab. Of course. So, yani, wallahi, my, my, my thing would be try to set goals that you focus and don't go right and left. Al Haq Haq, the truth is the truth. But make sure that when you when you get into these matters that you are certain that you have an evidence of it and not just like because Fulan or Alan or because of social pressure or whatever. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. But, but then after, Sharif, how, how does how does a student, let's say they're there and, you know, let's say they come from Belgium, for example, and everyone is, you know, telling them, oh, you have to take sides or you have to talk about this or this is that. And they got all this pressure. How can they deal with that? How can they stay? Just like how the ulama had, had advised us with just staying away and carrying on with your goals. How, how, how can you do it when you've got so much pressure? Well, like, that's, why you, that's why I said to you, don't take too many friends. 
two, and that's it. You understand what I'm saying? Like, I understand what you mean, but Akhi, take sides, like taking sides based upon what? Yeah. Based upon haq, based upon adilla, based upon, you understand? Like, what is very important, Akhi Abdullah, is what, is, ta is, is looking for the adilla evidence. But Akhi, me, I'm small, I'm young, Akhi, I'm small, I'm nothing. I can't differentiate, Akhi. Yeah, you understand what I'm saying, Abdullah? Like, yeah. subhanAllah, this is yeah. this is bala, akhi. Because, wallahi, a lot of the Western students, West, the Western students, they, they, they keep themselves busy with these matters. You understand? Yeah. Uh, wallahi, this is, yeah. yakhi, this is something, wallahi, akhi, yani, yakhi, for me, wallahi, akhi, yani, turn back to the ulama, turn back to a sheikh that you, that you trust. Ask him about this. See what he says to you. You understand what I'm saying? That's another matter. But there's a well, I, I I'm certain there's a lot of and and with all due respect, Yanni, But I, I know there's a lot of social pressure, Akhi. Especially well, with all due respect from from UK, America. They, well, I, with all due respect, I'm sorry. I know this this has been streamed in the UK, but they have a lot of social pressure, here, Akhi. You understand yeah. what I'm saying? And that is well, Alhamdulillah, with the Dutch brothers, we don't have this matter, here, Akhi. You understand? Yeah. We don't have this, Akhi. We're just teaching. We're just doing. We, you understand what I'm saying? Like we, I don't know, Akhi. I don't know. It's it's wrong, Akhi. You understand what I'm saying? Because you know, you know what, you know what happened, Akhi. You know what happened with Sheikh Suleiman Al Rahili. Yeah. yeah I, I'm just not clear. Like, do you yeah. want to say? Do you want to say? Do you want to say that Sheikh Suleiman Al Rahili is not Salafi? Uh, you want to say, and the whole we talk, Akhi, we are talking about UK, Akhi, where people are very far. Some people are very far from the dean. Who is there else to invite? You understand? Akhi, these matters, Akhi, this, this, well, like my advice would be to stay away, stay away, stay away. Yeah. Don't meet yourself into these matters, except if you have evidence and you are certain. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? I'm sorry, I'm just yeah, hitting I'm exactly. certain names and certain things on the head, but yeah, many, I'm, no, I'm, no, it's important, man. It's crucial because I think, look, I like to talk about stuff that's happening and affecting our communities, you know, in the West, and this is one of them. And in terms of Akhi Sharif, can you just like give us a of the ulama that you sat with and benefited? Who were the ulama that affected you the most up until today? Is still is still there that effect? Well, the number one that is in my head is Sheikh Abdul Razak Al Badri, Akhi. Why? Allah, he touches your heart, Akhi. He gives you things that you can implement. He gives you matters that are very useful in your life. He, 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 so no, like when you go, look, now when you start reading a lot of Ibn Qayyim and Ibn Taymiyyah, his books, you find that Sheikh Abdul Razak al-Badr makes those books easy for you. Okay. You understand? So Allah, like, for me, number one, Sheikh Abdul Razak al-Badr, I don't know, I, I, I benefit it. Still, now when I go back for Umrah and Sabliya, I, I sit with him, Akhi. He just yeah, goes, yeah. finishes books, he teaches you, and he continues, and he does it over again. And he, he gives you small points, but if you write those small points down and you, you think about them, they, they, they are very useful, especially in your life. He, he focuses yeah. a lot on things of your heart, of Toba. You understand? Yeah. Well, I, yeah. as, as well, uh, Sheikh Saleh Sindi. I, Sheikh Saleh Sindi, uh, alhamdulillah, in the time that everyone would go away, Alhamdulillah, I, I stay, I finished with him, Kitab al Duhid, Al Wasatiya, Tad Muriya. Akhi, I benefit from him. I, I remember one thing that I benefited tremendously from him, and that's a qaida of Shaykh al Islam al Timiyah. Wallah, Akhi, that's something you can implement in every matter of Al Asma wa Sifat. That's a qaida, a, 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 a rule, a fundamental rule that you can implement on everyone in regards to Asma wa Sifat. That is qaida al Mushtarak wa qaida al Mumayyiz. And when I teach here in Belgium, I bring this one forward a lot. Because of the fact that Qaid al Mushtarak wa Qaid al Mumayyaz, what does that mean? I'll explain it. I'll, I hope I can, I can explain it in English. But what does it mean? Allah, you're laughing because my English is gone bad, isn't it? <laughs> no, no, it's good, I love the English, Habibi. <laughs> so, yeah. It's better. It's better, man. Go on, go on. So, yeah, the thing is, look, the thing is, Akhi Abdullah, for example, um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Bal yadahu mabsutatan. He has hands. Yes or no? No. No. Bye. What does, for example, Ashairah, Wal Jahmiya, Wagayrihim, what do they do? Al Mutakalimin, Umuman. You have something that called Al Mutakalimin. Those are the people that were, that were uh, influenced by Al Falsafa. What's, uh, what's yeah. Falsafa again? Philosophers. Philosophers, especially the Greek philosophers. So they yeah. use the intellect. But what do they yeah. do? They say, oh, Allah has a hand. And we have a hand. No, 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 no. We can never ascribe this to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because what did he do? Did he compare? La. 
شيخ الاسلام تيمي انا اي بينيفيت ذس فروم 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 شيخ صالح السندي قدر مشترك قدر مميز اف وي سي هاند ان يو هاد يو انديرستاند وات ات مينز بات وين دوز ذا ديفرنس كم فورورد وين يو اسكرايب ات تو ذا وانز ذات ات بيلونجز تو ذن اتس ا ديفرنس بيتوين وات بيتوين ذا ايرث اند ذا مون You understand what I'm saying? Another example, another example. For example, you have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Allah, the Prophet says, Yanzilu Rabbuna Hina matabqa Thuluthu layl al-akhir Allah comes down in the third part of the Comes down. Like, yeah. We have to understand it from a Because well, what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say in the Quran? He says about the Quran Bilisanin arabiyin mubin In clear Arabic language. Yeah. So we have to go back to Arabic language. What does Nuzul means? It means من الأعلى إلى الأسفل from up to down. طيب عبد الله you go down the stairs. قدر الله sometimes you trip you fall. <laughs> so so <laughs> sorry okay والله. So that means that means that our going down sometimes has shortcomings. We can't always yeah. go down perfectly. You understand? Yeah. Allah Allah has the same. Sifat, but that is ascribed to him. With other words, we understand Nuzul when it's not ascribed. It means from up to down. But when we ascribe it to the one that it belongs to, the difference comes what comes in play. Allah is perfect. Allah says, وَلِلَّهِ الْمَثَلُ الْأَعْلَى Allah has the most perfect attributes. And the original state of the human being is what? That they have shortcomings in the attributes. I hope this is clear. Is it clear? No, no, that's very clear. It's very, very clear. This is a kind of... I'm going to just say it back to you as well. Just the example you gave with Nuzul. So yani Allah descending down when literally the third, last third part of the night comes in. Like you said, I go down the stairs a certain way. An animal goes, goes down, you know, goes down steps or a mountain or whatever. And obviously Allah Azza wa Jal descending is not the same way that we go down the stairs. That's basically in a nutshell. Am I correct? Yes, 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 yes. That, uh, the uh, the uh, only, uh, thing, uh, only thing that is there is the original meaning Of the attribute, that is what we have the same. But when we ascribe it to the one that it belongs to, that's when the difference comes. Comes what comes in play, even between different things that are what are, are created. I benefited this from Sheikh Salih, Habibullah Taala, till the day of today. Well, like this helps me a lot because you know when you go to the West, you have everyone here. Ya khi, you have Ashaa, you have everyone here. This this matter for me, it, 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 I benefit it this tremendously from him. So uh, in his place, I tremend, I benefit a lot in an in, in academic field. He taught me as well when wow. I was in Kuliyat Hadith. He taught me when I was in Kuliyat Hadith. You see, I was in your Kuliyat for a full one and a half okay. year. We're gonna get there. We're gonna get there. I'm coming. I'm coming. Mashallah, <laughs> Zakhlaq. Do you have any other ulama to add as well, or is that oh, yeah, I, okay, I, studied, too? I studied. So I studied I the ones that affected you the most, yeah. Yani. <laughs> I studied with Sheikh Suleiman al-Rahili, obviously. Uh, that's, that's many, many. Sheikh Ali Tawajiri, I did with him. I studied with him. Tafsir, he used to take me in his car. He used to treat me like his son. Oh, how well. is that? Can you talk to us about, about the, yeah, that relationship with Sheikh, uh, Sheikh Ali Tawajiri? I remember his specific How was he? What did you benefit? How did he use his time? What did you yeah, I just, I, I did it from him. It's, it's, it's matters, ya akhi. How he would treat me like his son. He would be very generous, very nice. You know what I'm saying? Uh, when I had a yeah. question, I remember once, uh, Hamush, he was with us in the car. And <laughs> Hamush had a whole question. So Sheikh Ali said, uh, Hamush said, can I record it? Sheikh said, yeah, no problem. So Sheikh goes, Alhamdulillah, Ya Rabbi Alameen. Wa salatu salam ala Rasul. And he starts answering the question. And, and the answer was about 15 minutes. Then Hamush says, Oh, Sheikh, I'm not going He said, I, I didn't record it. The chef said, ما في مشكلة. أعيدوا. And he did it again, ya akhi. Another 15 minutes, the same thing. Like he was oh, always Allah. very easy going, ya akhi. You understand what I'm saying? His akhlaq, his matters. Mm -hmm. And he always used to tell me, focus on knowledge. Focus on knowledge. Focus. Stay away from these matters. Focus on knowledge. Focus. He would, he would, he would like point that out a lot to me, ya akhi. You understand? Obviously, alhamdulillah, ya yani, well, For example, <coughs> there was a period when yeah. Sheikh Rabi' would, would teach um uh, Sahih Muslim, I, I went there as well. That was very nice, but Allah, he, he was very old at that time as already. So the lessons very short. Shah Abdul Mashin Abad, his answers and questions were very nice. Uh, we had a period of Sheikh Muhammad where he would do us answers and questions as well. But for me, for me, for me, if you ask for me, wallah, till the day of today, Sheikh Abdul Razak Al Badr, I, I benefit till the day of today from him a lot, ya akhi. 
and Sindhi. Yeah. Everything. That's look, now much. I'm teaching. I'm teaching Usul al Thalatha here in 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 Belgium. Yeah. Uh, all my notes. Let me see if I have my notes somewhere. I'll show you one second. Let me see. Show you my notes. Okay. Look, Afi. Half of my look. Let me see if I can find it. Allahu Akbar. This is like the talkhis, the summer that what I summarized from Sheikh Saleh. Still, you know, you see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, no, I, no. I go through it with the people in the masjid, yeah. So this is from Sheikh Saleh Sindhi. Now, Sheikh Saleh Sindhi, and uh, well, I, I used to in Aqidah, I used, used to take from As Salihain. Who are they? Saleh Sindhi or Sheikh Saleh Al Sheikh? Alhamdulillah, no, 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 no. I, I, I spent no, a full, I spent a full month. As well with Sheikh Fawzan. Allahu Akbar. Well, I love this man, ya akhi. Hafidhu Allahu Ta'ala. Wa tawwala Allahu umruhu ad ba'ati Allah. That was a real. I lost my passport. I lost my passport, so I couldn't travel. You see? You think it's sharr. But there's a hikmah behind it. The only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows. A wise lesson behind it. Allah knows. That's why, subhanahu that's why the ulama say, a sharr, the, the, the evil or the bad things, yeah. we do not... كيف نقول ننسبه إلى الله سبحانه وتعالى؟ Basically every single evil or anything that is bad we can't attribute it to Allah. Yeah, we don't ascribe it to Allah سبحانه وتعالى. Why? Because there's a حكمة, there's a wise matter behind it that we do not know except Allah. I lost my passport. Well, Allah الحمد I got to spend one and a half month every day with Shaykh Saleh Al Fawzan in this masjid in the time of Ramadan and after. Oh Allah Akbar, ya Khi. How was that, Khi? How was that? That's nice, Akhi. Short, short lessons, but with, with short answers, short lessons with a lot of benefit. No, was it Ramadan? Was it Ramadan? What year was that? I remember, I remember somebody would kiss the head of Sheikh Fawzan and he would stay, he would, <laughs> Allah, Akbar. Wallah, Marjala, Akhi, he's a man, Akhi. So then, Hafidahullah Ta'ala, Akhi, look at his status, look at where he is, look at his knowledge. He would stand and he would look at the guy like this. He got proper upset because I think because the fact that he feels that he does not deserve it. You remember when you visit him? He doesn't sit on his desk. His bish, his cape is on the chair and he's sitting on a small chair right next to his desk. No, he doesn't like it. He doesn't like kissing his head. He does his head like this. Exactly, exactly. He doesn't allow it. He doesn't allow it. <laughs> the question I had for you, Habibi Sharif, was let's talk about Kulia. Huh? Yeah. So what happened after you came to Kulit Hadith, you were there for a period of time, and then you escaped or you left and you decided to change. Escaped, yeah. You say escaped, yeah. Escaped. <laughs> that's, that's what the people of Kulit Hadith say, huh? <laughs> yeah, I'm, Arish, I'm meant to say you changed your boat okay, and you went. And you went and you decided to take on a new ship. What's the reason? I want you to tell me why. Faith. I liked hadith a lot because I liked fiqh. So I, I, I remember I, I was with a Palestinian guy. We would, we would memorize Muharrar and we would go to Minhatul Alam, Fisharhi Bulug Al Maram. Like we would proper read and revise. Yeah. And I enjoyed that a lot. I enjoyed that part a lot, mm -hmm. a lot. And I had Rashidan as well in the, in, in, you know, Asma al Rijal. Al Rijal. Allah was three times in a row, Akhi. You believe it. <laughs> but the thing was, nah, but Rashid, you know, he, he does Shadid, but you know, I remember, you know what he does? He, he went like this to someone, uh, like Shadid, and then he would, like this, he would be holding his laugh, ya khi. You understand? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he, he was all an act, he was all an act, but yeah. he was very beneficial. The thing is, the thing is, the thing is, hmm. I was taught Aqidah by Sindhi in the first semester. Okay. Second semester, I had Bassam al Hujaini. He's still young. Akhi, my heart, yeah, you don't know him. Anyways, he was young, but he was mujtahid. Yeah. My heart would every time go to this, this Aqidah lessons. Like when, when we had the Aqidah lesson, I would, I, I would run to the kulia so I would not be late and sit in the front. And I, I, I don't know, I really liked Aqidah, Akhi. You understand? So, oh. based upon my interest, even outside the kulia, I would focus a lot on what. An Aqidah. So then I decided to go to Da'wah Suluddin. So what, what did you do then? Is that second Mustawa I was beginning Mustawa Thalit, but alhamdulillah I started all over. That, in that time they were still possible. Now it's not possible anymore. Yeah. I started from the yeah. beginning of Kulit Da'wah Suluddin. Okay, let's, let's do some comparison. Okay. Let's do some comparison. Huh? Yeah. Compare the two Kulit. <laughs> There's no comparison. <laughs> 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 Aqidah, 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 A
Now, I'll be honest with you, me, myself, I love Hadith, I don't regret it, but I love Aqeedah and Tariqah, that's the thing that look, we don't have, look, look, but, Sirah, so we don't have but that. you have to, un- you have to understand, Muharrar, if, Wallahi, Thumma Wallahi, if you, especially you, Abdullah, because you finished, Muharrar, revise, and, and, and Wallahi, for example, like Minhatul Alam or any Sharh, yeah. and Wallahi, Akhi, that is a very strong book in, in regards to fiqh. Very strong book. If you have Muharrar, you remember, Alhamdulillah, I memorized half of it. I'm actually thinking of finishing it. I went through to Bulugh al but I might want to go back to Muharrar. Wallahi, Akhi, if you have Muharrar, unlock. Yes. And you have the yes. Sharh, Allahu Akbar. You have a very strong background in fiqh. Wallahi, la shakka wa la yes. And yes. the other thing that is beneficial in Kulit Hadith, if you are doing research, yeah. Then it's very important when you learn about Ilm al Rijal and things like that. Second of all, you learn the Sunnah. I remember, I'm actually yeah. thinking of one day of, of, of experience. You know, the Muqaddima of um, what's it called? The, 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 what's that called? Um, the first book that you do in Tadwina Sunnah. That Muqaddima of Tadwina Sunnah. I, till the day of today, I read, Wallah, I read it from time to time. I love it, Akhi. That if you read that book, ah, that's nice. Who told you? Who told you? Was the old man? No, 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 another guy. We had a good guy. We had a good guy. I, remember, I forgot his name. I forgot his name. But he was a good guy. I have friends now. I had one guy, Umar Shahimi. He was my friend in Kulit Hadid. Now he's teaching, actually. He's teaching Hadid. He started his doctorate and he's a teacher now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. Like, Kulit Hadid, it's the one thing I loved about it because you learn the Hadith of Prophet. So the Sunnah, the, the, you know, the Ta'zim Sunnah and all of that is beautiful. <laughs> But the one thing that I wish we did more on was Sira, because Akhi, my one of the bads that I love the most is Sira. I love it's history. Yeah, love but it. even Tariq al Islamiya, not only Sira, even Tariq, like about the Abbasiyah, the Umuyah. That's nice, Akhi. Wallah, that's nice, Akhi. I like that. But me, Wallah, I, I love the Aqeedah, like Al Asma'u Al Sifat. Like the Ulama say, they say, Lubbul Iman, Ma'arifat, Ma'arifati Al Asma'i Wa Sifat. Yani the, 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 the sweetness of Iman is to know the Asma'u Al Sifat, the names and attributes of Allah. So we studied that for a full year, ya Akhi. First, we studied everything from Ahl Sunnah wa Jama'ah. Then we studied Al Rudud Al Mukhalifin, yeah, how to refute those people that go against, like Al Mutakallimin wa Ghayrihim. Ah, that, I, I loved it. Another, point, another thing that I really liked was Al Firaq. We had Firaq, all the sects. I like that as yeah. well, because you get such a good understanding that you are upon Al Haq when you are from Ahl Sunnah or Jama'ah. And the thing is, as well, Habibi Abu Yahya, what's important, especially when you go back to the UK, uh, to the West, that's the majority of the people that are upon misguided, the people that, yeah. you know, question you about Asma or Sifat. And they question you about, you know, this doesn't happen. Al Qadr, Al Qadr, Al Qadr, Al Qadr. Yeah, Al Qadr is well. A lot of right. people that come from, come from people, they have, you know, a suit of one billah azza wa jal, you know, bad thoughts about Allah. So that's why, and I'm, and that's well, before, towards the end of hadith, I, I said to myself, I wish, you know, we did more of that. Well, that's, in, there's a nice book. If you, I have another advice. Well, look, look, Abdullah, I'm going to give you advice just between me and you. I'm sorry, I'm standing up. But no, no, no problem at all. I advise you, Abdullah. And everybody else to buy this, Akhi. You see what this is? I can't see. It's up, upside down, I think. It's an e-reader. Okay, and what is it? Like, you remember when all the books, I had all the well, books. I don't know, but I'm saying, is that a specific book? Yeah, you can put books on it. That's why, uh, Wallahi, this is so good, oh, Akhi. Oh, e-reader. Okay, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm reading, well, I, well, I advise everyone, because I, I keep on reading this book over and over again. If you want to be strong in Asma'u Sifati, you will have some... Some qawaid, there's a book of uh, of Sheikh Muhammad Aman al Jami, Rahimahullah ta'ala. That's called Al Sifat al Ilahiyah. Akhi, that's a very good, if you if you read that, you understand that that's a very strong book, Yaqi. MashaAllah. That sounds beautiful, man. That's why I was saying, if you, that's why I'm saying this to you. If you can't buy the book, get this, Yaqi, and download. I'm downloading bare books on it because I paid about 3,000 euros, Akhi, to get only my books shipped to Belgium, Yaqi. Yeah, I came to I came to Belgium. I became bankrupt, Jackie, because of the books. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, the next thing I want to talk about, Habib Sharif, is yeah. obviously, okay, you know, you studied there, you were there now, and yeah. before I touch on you teaching, I want to talk on a topic of the struggles that you went through when you were in Medina, because at the end of the day, you know, we're talking about it. We're 
thinking back now, alhamdulillah, Allah made it easy for us to complete. But many people, they struggle. They don't complete it. They go through financial difficulties. They go through marriage difficulties. So can you yeah. just talk to us about the difficulties that you face and maybe some decisions that you had well, to make when you, you went through that? You, you, touched, you touched upon two things. Like financially, mm -hmm. it was always a bit of a struggle because I was already a father and had kids, ya khi. At the time of Medina, yeah. I already had kids. So financially, I had mm -hmm. to... Be responsible. Subhanallah, I went to divorce. Uh, I was in Medina. And yeah, I finally, yani, subhanallah, I, I, I got divorced. Um, sometimes because you're young, you're very impulsive as well. So mm. you don't always think about your, uh, you know, about your decisions very well and stuff like that. But subhanallah, qadda illahi wa qadari. Um, yeah, I got divorced. And, and obviously, we can always say, yeah, it's the, but the fault is always from two sides. You understand what I said? The mistake always comes from two sides. But subhanAllah, yani, it's, yeah, it's not easy. Akhi. Those things, well, that, has, that, has a, that has a mental, that has a very tough mental effect upon you because your studies go on, the lessons go on, but you're trying to, you're trying to overcome this matter as well. You understand what I'm saying? So, yeah, that, that's not very easy. You understand what I'm saying? So how did you manage to overcome that? How, how, how did it happen with you? How, you know? Well, actually, I mean, it's something that was, because obviously I had two kids. Those were yeah. my kids from the UK. I had two kids, Adam and Asia. And subhanAllah, I mean, uh, you were already away from them because you were studying. Then finally, when you brought them, then you got divorced. So you had to, you got separated from them as well. Yeah, that was very tough. Because the fact, especially I come from Holland. So it was not... Mm common sense to me to go and settle in the UK now alhamdulillah I see my kids I call my kids stuff like that but yeah alhamdulillah I had a best friend and my best friend was Hamush you know Abdurrahman Abdurrahman Hamush of course. Yeah, of course. so yeah, I would talk to him I would talk to him a lot I would you know uh, open my heart uh, we would you know and that's very important that you don't keep it inside and that's alhamdulillah yeah. how I yeah, and a second I'll turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because everything at the end is qada ilahi wa qadri it's ibtila akhi it's ibtila from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's the way that I, alhamdulillah, yani, I think, I, I, yani, I, I, that's, that's actually a moment that I started to, subhanAllah, yani, be more uh, focused upon dua and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you understand what I'm saying? But yeah, it's something that, it's, it's something that stays inside, but you have to learn to give it a place, ya akhi, you understand what I'm saying? That's very important. But obviously it's always easy to say, ya qadda ilahi wa qadri and just move on. But, it is qada ilahi wa qadri, you have to accept that. But moving on sometimes is very difficult. So you have to find a good way to move on and just know that things don't uh, resolve just in one day or two days. It, it stays with you. But I, 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 alhamdulillah, I started to go to the gym uh, in the evenings when I come back from the haram. I started to focus on, on, on my lessons. I would talk to my friend uh, Abdurrahman a lot when I would feel down. You understand what I'm saying? Alhamdulillah, yani that, that's... Uh, you know, but those are experience in your life, and experience in your life will always stay, Akhi Abdullah. It will not like yeah. leave uh, till the day of today. Obviously, you have kids. It's not nice, nice to have kids that are not with you twenty four seven. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, that that was yeah, that was tough, yeah, Akhi. That was not easy. That was not easy. But, hey, so, uh, so what, in terms of when it was happening at the time, um, obviously you said there's always two sides to the story. So could you say that when you're in there, and advice for those that maybe bring their wives and stuff like that? What advice would you give them? In terms uh, very, of good. very good. Very you good. Know? Think about the fact that, subhanAllah, yakhi, that is something you have to understand that your wife has needs as well. Your wife might have ambitions as well. Like it's, it's subhanAllah, that's one thing that I think a lot of brothers, what they have is like they bring their wives and they just expect that everything will go. La, akhi, make a financial plan. Prepare yourself. Uh, akhi, yakhi, you're taking the daughter of someone else. She's the daughter of someone. How would you like someone to treat your daughter? You understand? St like, like, keep these kind of matters in your in your mind because it's not easy, akhi, life. It's not just, it's not all like uh, sunshine or whatsoever. I don't know, you know, what, what's yeah. the right what the right words for it but it is hard and you have to understand yeah. you go you are busy you go study you have your friends you already made uh you go to the majority but the wife you can't keep at home the whole day you understand what i'm saying with the kids like yeah that, that that is that is very hard you have to uh, try to make a plan like try to make a financial plan try to uh uh, uh be have some sort of stability that is very, very important when you bring your wife and your kids and try to give them a day as well. Uh, don't, like, try to give them time as well. They have hak on you as well. They have hak on you as well. So try to give them time. Try to give them as well enjoyable time. 
look when yeah they say they have a statement happy wife happy life <laughs> what is, what is, but it's important <laughs> <laughs> no but that is very important if she is if she is good if she's comfortable akhi wallahi you you form a very good team in medina and she will actually support you in doing what you're doing you understand what i'm saying but when we are young we don't think about these matters very well you understand so wallahi you're right man you, you, you as they say that you, you hit it on the nail so wallahi because there's so like so many brothers so many and this is like let's say 80 90 percent they bring their wives whatever and it's like they just dump them in the house and they forget about it Khalas. yeah yeah, yeah. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. i went to sheikh abdul razak al-badr to uh to any yeah, to complain a bit you know to say in in regards to um you know what i had and stuff like that so i started yeah, to yeah. Open, you know what he said to me he said until i said what he said, Antin Mukhti, you are the wrong, you don't want that's wrong. He said, you guys bring your wife from Europe and you and, and she's free to go wherever she wants to go in Europe and you expect her to stay in the house 24-7. You understand? Allah. So look at the hikmah of the sheikh. Yeah, he wow. said to me, she take, take her out once a while, go drink coffee. He said that to me. He said to me, drink coffee. She, I didn't tell him it was me, but I told her brother. You understand? But I think he understood that I talked about myself. You understand? But... <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah, he, he tried to be, he tried to be, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what do you call it? Yeah, 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 yeah. indirect. Yeah. Yeah, but subhanallah, indirect. Yeah, but yeah, he, he made a very strong point, yeah, he, you yeah. understand? Allah, he did, he did. Allah, That's what I would advise you. I would hmm. advise brothers these matters, like, think about it, like, when you bring them and and and, and do and you know, try to make a plan. And we have to learn from our mistakes, yeah, that is very important. Like I'm a very busy guy here as well. I study, I do, I you know said I teach, I work. But now, alhamdulillah, like, what is very important is communication as well between between spouses and not communication in that you say you do this, you do that. No, try to be. Um, they call it a form of connecting communication. What does that mean? I feel that that is not right. I have the feeling that you must know, always speak from the I form. And yeah. when you do that, it doesn't, it doesn't, the, and the receiving end, it doesn't come like you are blaming them. You understand? And that's very important. Like, for example, me recently, I, I'm still making these mistakes, but alhamdulillah, recently I have, I, like my wife told me, now alhamdulillah, I made Sunday is their day. Nobody else will come in that day. Sunday mm. is their day. So that's the mm. day for my kids, my wife. I take them, I teach my kids, I do, I, you understand what I'm saying? That's very important, mm. yaqi. Allah is Akhi. Well, I know you hit it, Akhi. That's very, very because, like you said, when you say like I feel and this is that, it's not you're not sort of it's not like you're military. Yeah, you know, you know what? Saying, it's it's from both, things. from both people. Never like they should never be like you do this and you do that. No, you should say I feel that you do that. I feel, for example, if somebody says you're always gone, that is a blame. You're blaming somebody. If you say I feel that you're always away. And I would like you to be more home. It's different than when you say, you're always gone. I want you to be more home. You understand? That is a way of connecting communication. You understand? So, yeah. Maybe what, what do you think about um, starting uh, in a marriage series and talking, you know, advising? No, 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 I think these, these hair will become white really soon. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, get, I get bad messages. Akhi, Abdullah. No, no, no. It's not going to happen. I have <laughs> I, I don't have a perfect marriage, bro. I need to first. <laughs> hey, we, we all need to fix it. But hey, one thing that you said there, hey, that wallahi, I, I literally, literally live for is making a day and making time. Because hey, wallahi, I've seen brothers. Imagine brothers on the weekends. They're calling me. Say, okay, do you want to come and chill? Do you want to come? Back? And these are brothers that have kids. I remember so one brother, he had like three, four kids at a time. And it's a Friday, Yom al so which is a day obviously in, in Saudi Arabia, which is holiday. Yeah. And I'm thinking to myself, how are you going to invite me to come and chill and have it go to a restaurant when it's your day off? Why are you not with your family? Mm -hmm. And I'll be like, okay. so this is something that all of those, listen, Khawani, when you're going to live in a place like Saudi, look at the, sh the advice that Sheikh Abdul Zakh gave to Abu Yahya. And it's Allah Khair, the Sheikh, he's thinking, he knows. And so many of the ulama, they say that a lot of the Western brothers, they make this mistake. They expect them yeah. to live in full. It's like living in prison. You have yeah. to make a day for your wives. Brothers, they live in there, and every weekend, they're going to Umrah with their friends. You yes. ask their wives, maybe the sister, she's been living in the country for six years, she's been Umrah twice. Yep, and he's yep, been yep. like, you know, 50 times. My Allah. No, no, sir, sir, sir. This is the mother of your, of your, this is the mother of your kids, yeah, 
You understand? Yeah. Anyways, the thing is, the thing is, the thing is, Akhi Abdullah, but it's the same thing with our yeah. children. There's a lot of, like, well, like, there's a lot of matters, Akhi, that we should should work on. Like, for example, I'll give you another point outside of the, 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 the wife is, you know, being very harsh and strict upon your kids. This is another problem that I get a lot in the, in the Muslim community. He wants his son to be an extension of himself. لا, you should be, you should be happy. You should be happy when you want, when you, mashallah, Hisham is, 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 is the Yemeni brother. He's washing the clothes and he, he forgets that I'm in camera. He's <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no problem, man. <laughs> <laughs> so the thing is like for example with kids there was a for example look they want their kids speaks la akhi your aim should be that your kid is a righteous muslim that he that he enjoys worshiping allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he understands the tawheed but you are talib im obviously it would be very nice if he would be a talib im but it doesn't always mean that that is you could not yeah, force him to be an extension of yours. I'll give you, there was a research, subhanAllah, look at this. Somebody sent me this research. There was a research of, um, of, uh, of, 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 of people in psychology and they said that kids that have a very tough and harsh upbringing, they are, it's more easier for them to fall into depression, to be exposed to be depression. But this is psychology, leave it. What did the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say? When he saw, this is, this is, uh, Hisham, when, when he saw, when he saw, uh, what you call it, he, he saw Hassan and Hassan, he kissed the hats. There was a, a Bedouin guy, he said, لَدَيَّ عَشَرَ مِنَ الْأَوْلَادِ لَمْ أُقَبِّرْ رَأْسَهُمْ قَدْ I have 10 kids, I have never kissed the head. What did the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say? مَنْ لَمْ يَرْحَمْ لَا يُرْحَمْ and who doesn't show mercy, he will not receive mercy from who? From Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is our deen, akhi. This is our deen. And yes, these researches are strong, but akhi, if we start with our religion, it actually goes together with our religion, akhi, because this is this is the way of the Prophet. So the same thing with the wives and stuff like that. This, this is very important, akhi. What does the Prophet say? He says, He says, Arrahimuna yarhamuhum arrahman. Irhamu man fil ardi, yarhamkum man fil sama. Yani, the most merciful, the merciful, they will be, the most merciful will be, merc will, will, will show mercy towards them. Be merciful with the ones on, uh, on, the, on, the, on the earth and the one in the heaven, above the heavens, will be mercy with you. Like, who's the one that has the most right upon your mercy? Your friends or your wife? Your wife, Akhi. Allah. Allah. But do it. Don't, a lot of people, they do it to expect things to be given back to La, make your heart be connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That you do it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you receive that mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If she gives it to you or she doesn't give it to you, it doesn't matter. You do it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's when you do not change. If she gives you good or she doesn't give you good, you'd still give her good because of the fact that what? You do it for the sake yeah, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is very yeah. important, ya khi. Those are important matters. Those are important fundamentals. Fundamentals matters that you should keep in your marriage Akhi. you understand oh, Allah, Allah. Abdullah that the topic should be should not be marriage Akhi. we're talking about marriage children and, and. <laughs> no no Akhi, well, no Akhi, well, it's, the best, Akhi. it's important Habibi man because Akhi, at the end of the day it's something that we need to talk about more Akhi. because look Habibi Wallahi the thing you said in the beginning that make your children not to be the extension of you and yeah. for you to yeah. try and yeah, yeah. You, you, know, you want your kids to be better than how you was or an extension but make them Okay, and I'm going to repeat what you said. Make them love worshipping Allah. Okay, this is so crucial and so important. Because the majority of the kids... Okay, I'll give you an example for me. My parents weren't practicing Allah and stuff like that. And okay, I know so many kids growing up. I remember them in high school. Their kid, their parents were practicing and whatever. And okay, my team now, they don't really love the deen. Okay. And you yeah. wonder, the majority of the children, when you... you know, you, And I had a conversation with one of them. One of them, I remember I had a conversation with him. He said, Akhi... Okay, because you know he he uh, may Allah guide him back to Islam, but he apostated. So I said to him, "Why why, why did you leave Islam? I want to know the reason." He said, "What do you think about a child who has been brought up ever since young? He's been told if you don't do this, you're going to go to hell. If you don't do this, you're going to go to hell. If you don't do so, it's just what there's no tarawih. It's, it's literally just what fear fear being instilled yeah, in that yeah. child's heart. Yeah, yeah, but that's wrong. That's, that's wrong. That's wrong. That's wrong. That's wrong. That you can know, actually those, thing, that, right? those but those are matters that could cause traumas. That could cause a trauma, oh, yeah. You understand? Oh, oh, oh. Yes, you, you, see that, you see that a lot, Akhi. That's why, Akhi, your, your kid has interests. 
And obviously, there is a way of being be in between the lines of what? Of Islam. For example, I'm going to give you an example. For example, yeah. a, a kid likes to play PlayStation. But yeah. you, he plays PlayStation, but then again, what? You, you Obviously, there's certain guidelines that think that you do not let him play. And obviously, you don't want him to waste your time. But if you now, yeah. if I now say to him, if I now say to him, no. Yeah. He will try to look for it where? Elsewhere. Outside. Uh, and he will play those games that I don't like him to play. For example, I'm just giving an example. Huh? But what if I now say to the kid, listen, all right, you want to play. What do you think? What do you think are a good amount of hours to play PlayStation? Let's say, let's say this. I'm just giving an example because this I get this example yeah. a lot. Then the yeah. kid would say, for example, three hours. You as a parent yeah. say, I think it's two hours. Let's okay. find a middle way. I will yeah. choose. I will give you half an hour extra and you will take half an hour away. You can play two and a half hours, for example, in the weekend. Achi, yeah. that is a way you, you still achieve what you want to achieve. Then you say, but I want you to do your Quran. What do you think is a good amount of, 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 of days to do the Quran? I want him to do Quran seven on seven. Let's say that's, yeah. he will say, yeah. well, you know, I think four. Khalas, let him do four, ya akhi. it doesn't matter. But what is the thing when he doesn't do it? Ah, do you remember? You told me four was good. You understand? Mm. So, akhi, you have to communicate. You have to talk. Mm. You have yeah, to yeah. understand yeah. as well. What does he like? What does he want to do? What are his interests? Guide him through it. Because what does the Prophet yeah. say? So he says, Kullukum ra'in wa kullukum mas'u'ulun am ra'yati. And you are all herders. What does a herder yeah. do with his flock? Does he take them or does he guide them? Guide them. Ha. And if he uses force, like they're going to run away. Exactly. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So those are matters. That's, that's very important in our community. I don't know how we got on this topic, Abdullah. Well, uh, that's the problem. When we talk, we go off topic. Yeah, okay. But anyway. <laughs> Inshallah, I'll end, this topic. I'll end this topic on one thing before you um, carry on, okay? Yeah. The thing that I heard Shaykh Suleiman al-Rahili one time, he said in his talk, and akhi, wallah, it, was, it was beautiful, akhi. and he was talking about the West and raising the children in the West and also other places as well. He was like, the problem is a lot of the people now with infitahat that we have, you know, things that are open more, social media and stuff like that. A lot of the parents, they keep their kids in like a box or like a circle. So yeah. they keep them grounded and imprisoned and they have this imprisonment kind of mentality yes. where you yes. can't do this no 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 everything is no and he said the more you do that to a child like you gave the example the more they're going to search for it when they reach the age or they get in contact with people that have the thing yes. that they want but the yes. sheikh said no don't do that rather what you should do yeah, and he give them opportunities and choices yeah that are allowed and halal so the more options you give them so let's say they want to do something that's bad or they want to do something that you know could be bad. Give them options. Yeah, exactly. More often than you give them that are good so that way they can choose from 10 instead of one from the two that are bad. That, that's, that's the first thing as well. You give them the, the, the feeling that you take them serious, that their yeah. meaning or their, their opinion is, and their view is being respected. Even though you don't respect, it means you listen to him. Yeah, these are very important matters, Yaqi. And this is what this is the, the way of the Prophet said them, Yaqi. If you go look in the, the way that the Prophet would raise Yaqi, this is this you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Ah, Allah so, is important. Allah you know, Allah. Like for example, like yeah. the example I said about the Prophet, the, the example that I gave of Hassan Hussein. Yeah. Rahma. He, he was merciful. You understand? With, 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 you understand? And those those are important matters, Yaqi, you understand? And no doubt you could say that something is wrong. But you know, if you if you look, you have to understand something, Abdullah. If you now say to a child, if you do this, I'm gonna punish you. Yaqi, that's actually manipulation, Yaqi. Yeah. That's a form of manipulation, Yaqi. Obviously, you could say, listen, I do not accept when you do this, and when you do that, there will be consequences. Obviously, yes. <laughs> there's certain situations especially in school because i was a teacher before as well these are things yeah yeah sometimes you have to but like you know you have to understand as well that your your child the, the thing that you should achieve is that he worship allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he does not fall into what into shirk you should educate him you should you know what i'm saying but as well you should make your your kid your best friend yeah you know, if, he, if, he, if he is shy to turn back to you who will he turn back to, Yaqi? Who will he turn back to? He will turn back to people outside. And those people will never want good for him as you want good for him. 
Because a parent does not, it does, you understand what I'm saying? Mm. Okay, well, I, well, it's a very important point. They say that play with your child until they reach the age of puberty. Yep. Play with them until they reach that age of, you know, they know right from wrong. Play with them, be literally like their best friend. And then when they get a bit older, okay, before they hit that, you know, teenage year, adult year, be with them as an advisor. When they reach that age of, you know, adults and like they're, you know, they're an adult now, they're going to turn back to you in matters and they're going to feel comfortable because you were their friend when they were young. And yeah, I think that's very important. important. Yeah, that's very important, Jeffrey. Well, Allah, what you Allah, what you Allah, what you Allah, what you Because I like we live in a tough time, Sharif, man. Especially, Allah, Allah. you know, in the West, I feel like. Yeah, our time. environment, our school, they go to school, they go to, yeah. you understand? And you don't want you don't want you to be what they call in English, I think, the boogeyman. You don't want to be the the bat, you know what I'm saying, in their face. I don't know if that's the right expression. Yeah, or no, not. Right, right. Yeah, you don't want to give me memories. <laughs> you don't want to be the bad person in their eyes. You understand what I'm saying? You want to be the the the, the, the comfort zone. You want to be the person that they turn back to. You understand? That is very important. Mm -hmm. And that, alhamdulillah, that's something that some, that's something that 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 our religion actually we we find back matters of the Prophet that what we that we that we could get this understanding from as well. Yeah, and yeah. Before we finish, I want to ask you just two more things. The first one is in terms of when you were there, actually, obviously you graduated. Alhamdulillah, I think you graduated in twenty eighteen, right? Twenty eighteen yeah, or twenty seventeen? Yeah, yeah, alhamdulillah, yeah. yeah. So then afterwards, Zafi, I just want to know just if you can give us a quick glimpse of the life in Tabuk and then when you came back to Belgium, please. They have a statement in Tabuk. They say, Tabuk, tansa ummaka wa abuk. Even if it's Nahwi and it's not correct because it's just ummaka wa abak. But they say, Tabuk, yeah. tansa ummaka. Well, fi alin, Allah, Tabuk was a very nice place, Akhi. Uh, obviously, because yeah. I was in Saudi, I had the choice to either go for masters, uh, but obviously I had five kids at that time. Or to yeah. continue studying with some some people there. There's alhamdulillah some people there like uh, Hamid Al Garmush. There's different people that were there. Not they're not very known. Uh, you have uh, Ahmed Ibn Aqil Al Unazi. He's very strong in fiqh. And I was teaching English as well. <sighs> Although my English is not perfect. Uh -huh. You went for lecturers to teach. Nah, I learned about English. Yeah, yeah. I was teaching there. At the same time, um, what you call it? Um, Alhamdulillah, I was studying, I was focusing on fiqh a lot. And Alhamdulillah, yani, wallah, akhi, I, that, I had a different, I, I took a, di I, I got a different view of Saudis. Akhi, there, I met some very good people. Uh, there's proper Bedouins, like proper Bedouins. But akhi, they are so generous. In the two years I lived there, I never yeah. paid for a dinner out. They would say, Wallah, that's for ma kalimak, ma salim alayk. That's what they would say to me. And they say, Wallah, I will not talk to you, I will not give you salam if you pay. And Akhi, yeah. Akhi, when I left, yeah Allah, Akhi, this is how you see Akhi. From them, from them, I learned the, 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 the how to treat the parents, Akhi. Yeah Allah, they are general people. If Akhi, practicing people in the West had their attributes, Allahu Akbar. Akhi, for example, I'll give you an example. We were in a majlis, we were in a majlis, yeah. like a, a, a meeting. And, you know, they are from a kabila, it's called Qabila uh, Bili of Bluey. You have Musa ibn Nusayr. Musa ibn Nusayr, he's the one that opened the Andalus. Like, what do you call it? Open, he, he, he basically conquered oh, and Andalus. Yeah. And he yeah. uh, he's called Musa ibn Nusayr al Bluey. So those people are, oh, so wow. one Kabila was al Bluey. And I was, I was in, and one of my friends, his, his father is a sheikh of, 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 of Bluey. So okay. obviously for them, like the Nasab, the, 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 where they come from, is very important. <coughs> yeah. And all the Arab, all the Arab, <coughs> they either come from Atnan or they come from Qahtan. Yeah. If they come from Atnan, that means they have the lineage of the Prophet ﷺ. Qahtan yeah. is, is another one that goes... The, anyways, they go back to Yemen. So yeah. the father was saying about that lineage and, stuff, and th that they went back to Atnan. And the oldest son was sitting there. The oldest son, he has kids and everything. He's, in it, he's, he's almost 50, you know? Yeah. So he didn't speak. His father left. After his father, he said, Wallah, I did not want to say anything in front of my father because that would be disrespectful. He said, but the truth is that I did research and we are not from Adnan. We come from the lineage of Qahtan and these are all the evidence. Blah, blah, blah. But he said, please do not say it to my father. I just give to you information. I don't want my father to think that I go against him. Um, Akhi, and the rest wow. people would speak out to their father, Akhi. Wallah, he's quiet. Do not say anything, um, Akhi. 
like this, I have like this, I have more. Well, yeah, I have so, oh, so many stories okay, of, of I benefited tremendously how they dealt with their parents, with their neighbors. When I left, okay, Abdullah, when I left, okay, they gave me, they gave me, they gave me, they gave me about, uh, they gave me a present of about uh, maybe uh, what you call it, uh, okay, uh, of uh, the one second, Abdullah, hey, Shab, of maybe what you call it worth uh, maybe 4,000 pounds or something. Wow. Wow. Uh, wow. Abdullah, can you, can, you, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. I can hear you now. Yeah. Your camera's frozen. Yeah, now I think now it's better. Can you hear me? Can you hear Sorry, Akhi. Can you hear me? Yeah, no, no. It's okay. It's okay. I can hear you. Yeah. You were okay. saying they gave you a present. So, of yeah. They gave me presents worth of like 4,000 pounds or something, yeah, Akhi. That's, that's, that's called generosity. Very, very generous people, yeah, Every week I was invited by a different sheikh of Kabila to eat. And, you know, Akhi, they were very, I don't know, man, I've, I've never, they had manners, Akhi, of cheating guests. Yeah, you know the matters of man kani yu'minu billahi wal yawm al-akhiri fal yukrim jara wa yukrim daifa. Whoever yeah. believes in Allah in the day, in the day of, 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 of judgment, let him be good for his for his, his, his guest and his, his neighbor. Akhi, wallah, I, I saw that when I was there, yeah, Akhi. It was ajeeb. Um, so, yeah, living with so my, experience was, my experience was very, very nice. Very, very nice, yeah, Akhi. Till the day of today, I'm in very good contact with them people. Like, we call on a daily basis and we send messages and understand. So, Akhi, what, you, were, you, what, you had like a little farm, chickens and stuff like that, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, you know about that, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had a I had a small house and a, yeah. a little farm. I had chickens. I had uh, fig trees. I had uh, olives. I had like a mango tree, and I was a bit wow. far out of the city. I loved it, Achi. Nice, huh? <laughs> oh, it was very nice, Achi. I was, and I had a cat. I had a cat that as well. So, so I want to know, Habibi, what caused you to go back? What was the reason you went back? Well, actually, obviously, obviously, look, I have my, my kids in the UK, so I wanted to be closer to my kids because my kids are yeah. getting older now as well. And yeah, obviously, I miss them a lot. Yeah, I'm not going to lie to you. That's the first thing. Second of all, as well, like for financial reasons, now you have the, the rusuma that you have to pay and stuff. And I didn't. Dependency. Yeah, dependency. I didn't expect it to come in the beginning of the year. I expected to come at the end of the year. So subhanAllah, the first year that I, I, I had that, subhanAllah, I had to... Um, Yes, and I had to, to pay it, but I didn't have it. So I had to take a loan. So I kept on every year taking a loan for that. I was like, I can't go on like this, you know. So alhamdulillah, yeah. I came back second of all, the opportunity of da'wah, akhi. Because at the end of the day, you are uh, uh, accepted in the university to go back and teach and, and, and teach people, educate people about the religion. Even if you have a little bit of knowledge, teach what you know. You understand what yeah. I'm saying? So alhamdulillah, yani, I, I'm here now. I'm doing the khutbah al jumuah uh, I'm an imam in another masjid. Uh, alhamdulillah, I teach today. How, 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 teach is how, how, how is that? How has that been, that transition going back to Belgium and being there, settling down and whatever? Hey, no no doubt. It's a different environment. It's hard. But wallahi, akhi, uqsumu billah. When you do da'wah, Allah opens doors for you that you never expected to open. And wow. there's no better way to revise your knowledge than when you teach. Because when you're just reading through the book, it's different than when you have to prepare and you have to go over it. Because now I understand, Sheikh Abdul Mahsin Abbad, they say that when he prepares the lesson, it takes him about two or three hours to prepare. So I took that in, in, in mind and I go over it, I write, I look, sometimes I go back to tafsir and akhi, you benefit tremendously from giving that way, akhi. Haqiqatan, yani, that's one thing, subhanAllah. And yeah, I, I, I know, I, Allah has opened doors that I never... Akhi, alhamdulillah, a couple of people, they, they did the shahada upon my... Uh, you know, in, in my presence, while I gave them the shahada, they became Muslim. Akhi, the Prophet says uh, to Ali, and Yahdi Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, alayhi dhaka rajulun, yani a rajulun wahidun khayru min humar al ni'am. That when Allah guides someone through you, it's better than the red camels. And the red camels was, was an fashay, was the best thing and the most expensive thing in the time of, uh, of the Arab to, to, to have. So, but otherwise, it's better than the dunya and everything that is in it. <coughs> you understand? So alhamdulillah, yani for me, yeah. But the only thing that you have to keep in mind, that's the first thing. Yani keep yourself and your family away from the hellfire. That's one thing you should establish before you uh, do da'wah. Yani that's a very important matter as well. But 
اللهم لك الحمد يعني الحمد لله ان والله ام ضعيف ام يعني ويك سيرفنت اوف الله سبحانه وتعالى بس الله هاز هاز فيفرد مي وذ وذ اوبورتونيتي تو تيتش ان اسلنت فالحمد لله الحمد لله اللهم لك الحمد الله عز وجل يديني توفيق اخي وفقكم الله وجزاكم الله خير والله اخي بيوف واخي and before we end i just want you to you know take this opportunity if you want to give any piece of advice or end notes or anything like that اخي for the listeners والله I, I, one advice I want to give everyone alhamdulillah be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala why sorry, sorry, one second habibi yeah. before you give the advice wait, wait, you, you have to interrupt me yeah? <laughs> sorry, I want it in English and I want it in Dutch I just want to listen to the Dutch language you want in Dutch yeah? yeah first in English then in Dutch طيب خلاص no problem so first of all I advise everyone to be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and yeah. why Uh, if we look at Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala he says being thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is through three elements the first one being thankful is with the with the what with the heart that you are certain 100% that the ni'am the uh, blessings from Allah come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and no one else you might achieve matters in your life and someone may take the same road he doesn't achieve it and you achieve it while you have taken the same road the same reasons you have done the same matters but you reach it and he doesn't reach it know that this is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that you are certain in your heart that those ni'am come from what from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says as well uh, and if you would like to uh, what do you call that calculate all the ni'am from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you, the what count count If you would like to count all the ni'am from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you would never be able to do so. That's the first thing. Second thing that you are thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the tongue. And speak about the ni'am from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not out of arrogance, but out of remembrance. You say to people, subhanahu look, this is the fadl of Allah. Allah has given this. I have not done this. This is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what... From Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, that's, the, that's the second point. The third thing is that you are thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with your, with your body parts through ibadah. Oh, family of Dawood, act and do deeds out of thankfulness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And look, this is what we do. But look, look at the rahmah, look at the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What happens if you are thankful? Allahu Akbar. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَا إِنْ شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ And if you are thankful, I will increase you. With other words, that ni'mah, that, that blessing that you have been given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will stay. And what? And you will be given more and more and more. Allahu Akbar. We have to be thankful. But look at the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa Ta'ala. That's that's the thing that I would keep this in your in your in your mind and keep this as a guideline in your life that you always try to be thankful for everything Allah has given and you will take as benefit that what that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will what will increase you will increase you in ni'am in blessings and there's other many things that I could say but I want to keep it short because if I start talking I'll go on for for an hour yani. Okay? No problem, Allah is very quick. I've said this. I've said this many times in Dutch, Achi. I want to hear the Dutch, Achi. I want to. I like the Dutch language. Dat je dankbaar moet zijn voor Allah Subhanahu wa Taala en dankbaar zijn naar Allah Subhanahu wa Taala toe is door middel van drie elementen. Dat is door middel van het hart, van de tong en de ledematen. In het hart dat jij 100% zeker bent dat die gunst afkomstig komt. Of afkomstig is van Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Om het feit dat jij probeert iets te bereiken. En iemand anders probeert iets te bereiken. Op dezelfde manier. Jij krijgt het wel voor elkaar. En die andere persoon niet. Dit is omdat Allah jou begunstigd heeft. Dus dat jij weet dat dit komt van Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In jouw hart. Niet dat jij het hebt gedaan. Jij hebt de esbab gemaakt. Maar Allah heeft het aan jou gegeven. Dat je daarvan overtuigd bent. Met de tong. Zoals Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala zegt in de Koran. En spreek over de gunsten van Allah. Niet uit arrogantie. Maar dat jij mensen herinnert, dit heb ik gekregen door middel van Allah. Dit is van Allah. En met de ledemate, zoals Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala zegt, i'malu ala Dawood shukra. O familie van Dawood, handel, verricht daden uit dankbaarheid naar Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala toe. Met de ledemate, dat je datgene verricht waar Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala van houdt. En dit moet jij verrichten, maar kijk naar wat Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala jou geeft. En dan zegt Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, 
En dit is van de barmhartigheid van Allah. Hij zegt, Wala in shakartum, la azidannakum. Als jij dankbaar bent, zal ik jou vermeerderen, subhanallah. Die gunst blijft, en Allah zal je meer, meer geven. En dat zei Abdullah. Je laat het niet meer. <laughs> nah, nah, not even after. Allah is zakhla khair is bin Barakallah Thank you for conversation May Allah Azza wa Allah Azza wa Jalla Naj'al hadha al-liqa wa al-majlis In yakun khalis an wajhi al-kareem Atqabbal minna wa yaj'alhu nafi'an Lil-mustami'in Wa sallallahu Azza wa Jalla Niktub hadha fi mizan hasanatina Wa yaj'ma'na jami'an Ana wa anta wa ahlina jami'an Wa jami'an al-muslimin In ahli al-jannat al-fadawus al-a'la Wa man qiyam ya rab آمين آمين الله يسعدك أسأل الله سبحانه وتعالى أن يرفق قدرك ويرزقكم جميعا السعادة آمين. في الدنيا وفي الآخرة الله يحفظك يلا أشكركم الله أن أنتم تبقى سعادة حبيبي والله أعوذ معكم تقول لكم كاتب نفخي الله عز وجل وبارك الله فيكم حبيبي أستي إن تاتش أخي عبد الله بارك الله فيك